Today we're going to talk about how to use two USBs on your Raspberry Pi Pico. What we're going to do is we want to have, um, a, for example, a keyboard in to the Raspberry Pi Pico and then a USB keyboard out to my standard computer. Now the Raspberry Pi Pico only has one dedicated USB port driver device and that is from the only USB port on the board. But what people have done is they've used the PIO blocks, the programmable blocks, to emulate a hardware USB device on the Pico itself. So we're going to be cutting up a cable and then splicing it into the Raspberry Pi Pico so we can have a host on the Pico and a device on the Pico. Okay, so we'll see what this looks like. So right here I have a programming Pico that programs this USB device right here. This cable right here connects into my PC and these are the splice together connector uh, let's see if I can just gently from this guy right here. So this is basically this wire right here, but I clipped this lead right here and I sp spliced these little headers onto it so it could easily plug into a breadboard. So over here we have the power and ground. And then over here we have the data lines. The green one is the minus and then the white one is the positive. Since USB requires two wires, because it's a differential pair. Okay, so. And just so we all know, the keyboard is gonna be talking to the Pico over this right here. And then the Pico is talking to my computer over this wire here. And it's getting programmed over this. So let's go back to my computer. This is the code. And before we get into the code, I want to state one thing that got me. What you first have to do is make sure that you make sure that you have the latest um, the latest Pico SDK. So there's these files up here that need to be available. And you'll know if you'll need to update your Pico S SDK is if you if you go to it. Uh, let's go to documents. We'll go to Pico SDK. Um, we go to libs. We go to tiny USB. Oh no, we go into source, then portables, Raspberry Pi, and then PIO. If you don't see these two pot these two files in this location, you'll have to go and re-download the SDK to a newer version. So let's go back to my example which is the Pico device and host. So in this example, we're going to be using uh, two different host and device instances. And on the device side, we have an HID client and a CDC client. So the CDC client is for us to basically have a UART line without plugging in a UART debugger or a UART uh, uh, sniffer, I guess, or whatever. And the HID device will be our keyboard. And the host is going to be connected up to a keyboard. Now, this code is a little bit odd and that the example I got used two different cores for the driver. So I split them up into two files. 
So the device is the thing that starts it off. We've got our main file here and it launches the second core here and then it does its uh, tiny USB device code. So there'll be tiny tiny device there'll be tiny USB host code as well once we go into the, the main underscore host file and you'll see TUH. Now since this code's not ingesting any information this is pretty pretty light on the actual code. Now on the host side a lot of stuff is happening. So I'll start at the beginning. We have this big define up here, which could be in line here, but it basically is the configuration for the PIO block. So here it's stating where the, um, the pins will be. So zero and RX should be one. Yep. And from there, other than this, it should act just like a standard um, host device. So where the magic happens, I'm not going to go through a lot of this stuff, but in the process key event, this is where we get the host to talk to the device. In the process key event, I just pass the report in from the HID keyboard. So this is the host keyboard. Um, let's see. That would be this keyboard right here. And then we're going to send it through our keyboard to our, uh, we're going to send it through the USB device to our PC. So this is the magic where um, it all happens. So when I press my keyboard here, it gets sent through. Uh, there is also these TUD device CDC writes. So if we want to, we can open up terminal and we can see what the device looks like. So right now it's just passing the keys both as um, keyboard events but also as your CDC commands. Um, and if this is something you want to try at home uh, you don't need this programmer. You can still press the button and upload it the standard way. Um, I just find uh, this way to be a lot quicker. If you feel like making modifications to this, um, some of the biggest changes I think that would be useful would be better communication between the two uh, threads, the two different cores. Um, I don't know if there will be any conflicts calling the different libraries, calling from the host side, calling the device driver. The other thing I would suggest is if you need to make changes to the descriptions. So in the USB underscore scripts.c, you'll see all the, the actual um, code to generate the USB descriptors. Uh, so this is a pretty good one. This is setting up the CDC descriptors, the HID descriptors, um, and these are the endpoint names. So if you wanted to add another endpoint, you'd have to, you know, it'd either be uh, 04 or 0x84. Um, if 
but uh, I think to describe uh, how to edit this file, we'll probably it would have to be a separate video because it's a big topic. Um, so hopefully you found this useful and you can build your own dual USB um, device and host uh, Raspberry Pi Pico 